Wow, finally clear sky. I can already see the first stars. I love the beautiful night sky. But when we are in cities, it can be challenging to find spaces or time to enjoy the beautiful night sky. Setting up equipment becomes even more difficult with factors like weather conditions, urban settings, and especially light pollution, as you can see behind me. I'm sure you can sympathize with me. Well, my name is Christian Sasse, and I'm based out of Vancouver in British Columbia. For years, I've been looking for an easy solution. Celestron is known for their excellent optics and telescopes, but what was missing in their product line is something that just combines everything. So I'm very excited to introduce to you the Celestron Origin. Let's go through the initial setup. So here we have the mount and the tripod and also the carrying case. The carrying case contains the optical tube assembly. That's what you usually call the telescope. The case is a useful accessory which can be purchased online as an extra item. I really like it as it gives great mobility. So let's do the setup. Orient the mount so that the arm of the mount is on your left. So facing the camera, you're looking at it from the right side. And it's facing the section of the clear sky. So the first thing we have to do is level the whole tripod and mount assembly. There's a bubble leveler that you can find. Adjust the three legs so that the bubble leveler is exactly horizontal. Adjust the three legs to appropriate heights. Check for any obstacles such as railings and you can just lift the whole tripod so that you can just go above any obstacle. The next thing what we're going to do is to attach the optical tube assembly to the mount. So let's open first the quick release button, that's this button here, as much as possible. Loosen the altitude knob here on the side and just turn the whole altitude rotator so that the quick release button is pointing downwards. And then tighten the knob securely again. Let's install the optical tube assembly. Take the optical tube assembly out of the carrying case, and I'm just going to do that now. And you can see it's facing, the, the lid is facing towards the camera at the moment. I'm just going to put the bag out of, to the side. And now it's very important to hold this securely in two hands. This here is the dovetail. Point the dovetail here directly towards the clamp and just gently push it in so that it grips firmly. Once it does that, look where you can see the writing and just where you see the end of the word origin, you can fasten the quick release knob. Turn it until it is secure. When you align this with the clamp, you will find that it's almost balanced. So if I open here this knob, it will be almost balanced. So you can see it's a little bit back heavy, and that is because the whole electronics sits in the back where the mirror is. So I just have to adjust this until this is perfectly balanced. And you can see now it's perfectly balanced. Make sure that it rotates through all the way. And that way, you're basically finished. You can now tighten the knob again and leave the telescope horizontal. There is one cable, that's the accessory cable, that goes from the mount to the telescope. And that basically completes the optical tube assembly. There's one more thing that is important, and that is the power supply. As you can see here, in this case, I just have a camping battery pack, and I attached the power supply to there. So just make, that, make sure that the lithium ion phosphate battery that sits inside the mount arm is fully charged before you go, and the battery will last throughout the whole night. And now we're almost ready to go. Let's first remove the lens cap. That's a typical photographer's mistake, especially mine. <laughs> we have to first download the app from the App Store. I'm going to do that now. In this case, I have an iPhone 15. 
and I'm going to search for Celestron Origin. In the meantime, I have downloaded the app from the App Store and you can do exactly the same for Android with Google Play. I'm just going to press open now and follow the instructions. I'm going to allow this for the app. And now there are some quick start instructions. We just have to follow them. So it's good to read these and let's switch on the power. Asking for permissions, also for direct connection. And it's asking us to join the direct network. It has indeed got a direct connection and it's going to initialize now. And it's going to focus and then it's going to plate solve to know where it is. Together with the GPS coordinates of your smartphone, it will always know exactly where it is. It's going to a second position now. And it says ready to image, so now the fun starts. In fact, you don't even have to stand next to the telescope anymore. You can sit, and that's exactly what I'm going to do now, and remotely control it from my app. Just be sure that you're not too far away from the mount because you are still using the direct connection. If you have a look at the planetarium, you can see that there are many objects in orange that you can look at. I'm going to just choose M13, the Hercules cluster, because I know that it is very prominent at the moment. So let's just type in M13 and do search. So we here get the information about the Hercules cluster. And as we look through and we just use our finger to swipe to the left, we can look at the current altitude, which is around 73 degrees. That means it's quite high in the sky. So let's go ahead. I'm going to now press center and you can see the planetarium move. The field of view indicator, that's the virtual field of view, is homing in onto the Hercules cluster, M13. The great part is that you now also get a live view. There's a picture in picture and the identical button is also the bottom center one. If I press this, I get a direct view of the sky. So that is the video mode of the camera that is looking directly at the sky. So this looks very similar to the view that you would get when you're looking through an eyepiece of a telescope. You can't quite identify the colors, but you do see that there's a some kind of blob object that looks a bit like a globular cluster. You can zoom in and have a closer look. The real fun is starting to image. So all you need to do now is just to press the button down here, start imaging. And now it's taking 10 second exposures. And as the 10 second exposures evolve and they will be stacked one upon the other, the Hercules cluster will become clearer and clearer. Already the first image that we get after 10 seconds and we expand it is strikingly good, even though this is in the middle of the city. And you don't have to take too many, otherwise the center will just get too bright. I'm just going to take three or four exposures and you can see especially how the fainter outer parts are getting more and more contrast and detailed. Once you're happy with your exposure, all you have to do now is press the bottom center button and there it will say download and save. So I'm just doing that. I'm downloading and saving it. It's processing it now in real time. So the four or five images have been stacked in real time now and you're getting the result. And this is exactly what it looks like. You can now, if you have internet, you can share this with your friends. Before we go to another object, I would like to show you now also how the WLAN works. So, the advantage of using WLAN or your home network is that you can control origin and connect to the internet and at the same time do things like sharing images to social media and checking for origin software updates. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to go back into the settings menu 
and I'm going to go to Wi-Fi settings and in this case I'm going to say run network quick start and here you can see that I have the different wireless LANs here. Mine in this case is called Hubble so that's the one I'm going to choose. So I'm going to click on it and now Origin knows that it has to change the network from a direct connection and find the, your smartphone via your home network. So I'm going to say restart and that's fine, reconnect and this is going to take a few seconds or even a few minutes and it's now going to reconnect. And it is telling us that it has indeed connected. So I'm going to close this and it says ready to image. We are now on our home network. So let's take one more object, for example, the Dumbbell Nebula. If you look down here, you can see tonight's images, for example, and there are lots of suggestions. Just be sure that the suggestions that pop up are visible in the fraction of the night sky and that there's no obstacle in the way. And there we go, there's the Dumbbell Nebula. You get all the details and I'm going to say center. So the telescope is now centering, it's on the wireless LAN now. And because we have a lot of light scattering, we can't really see a lot from the Dumbbell Nebula, but if you look very closely at the center, you can actually see the outline of the Dumbbell Nebula, even though the colors are not visible. So that again is the video mode of the camera. So I'm going to try and now say image. You will also notice that on the top left part of the screen, there's a loudspeaker. If you click on that, you will get some description of the object that you're looking at. And here we can expand in and you can indeed see the beautiful colors. You can see the red on the outside, the sort of greenish bluish in the center and the shape of the dumbbell. It's also possible to just leave the app. So if I do close now and I leave the app and I feel like doing something else, I'm going to jump back. The mount is working completely on its own. So when I jump back in now, You can see that the total stack already consists of seven images. And there's also an interesting compass needle on the top right. If I press that and you hold your phone against the sky, so you can even find the Dumbbell Nebula this way if you don't know where it is, and you can point exactly in the same direction as the telescope is pointing. For example, this is what I'm doing right now. And you can also explore the gallery if you wish. So in this case, I have done quite a lot of objects and you can see some of the, them are absolutely glorious. That for example is the Lagoon Nebula and so on. And especially when you go out to dark places, and I hope to show you this some other time, you'll be able to get very clear images. This is also Andromeda which is visible at the moment. So I can close that. And let's go back into the live imaging here and we are already at 14, so we've done a total of 140 seconds, and I'm just going to interrupt this now, download and save. And it's now processing the image in real time, and we are ready. You can also press the edit button, and if you wish to, for example, bring out the saturation a bit more, use the slider. And that's not bad for such a short image. Well, I hope that you're as excited as I am. This is really a revolution for us with telescopes because now we can go out and explore. I wish you all the best. Have happy imaging. Thank you.